here trying to help you. I'm here to give you what it took me 30, 30 years in ministry to get. All right, let's, let's go to work. That's where my spirit at right now. Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter number 5. We're going to be reading verse 17 and 18. Just two verses. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. I want you to say that with me. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Amen. That's what you got to do. All right. Now, last week, we started this series, and we're using this word, understanding what the will of the Lord is, understanding God's vision. Remember, the will of the Lord is God's vision. Say that with me. The will of the Lord is God's vision. So when you understand the will of the Lord, he's saying to you, you need to understand God's vision. All right. Now, we know God gave his vision to the apostle Paul. We'll look at that in just a moment. But let's go on. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18 says, And be not drunk with wine where in excess, but we fear with the Spirit. All right, now, that's what we told you about last week. To be filled with the Spirit is no different than when Paul told the church in Romans 12, renew your mind. Because everything he's telling you, listen, make sure you have the Spirit. Make sure you have the Spirit, because all this stuff that God is going to tell us about today, you cannot do it if you don't have the Spirit. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you now for your living inside of us. Thank you, Father, for giving us your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your Son on the cross. Thank you for his dying for our sins, buried, raised again from the dead. Thank you for justifying us. Thank you, Lord, for equipping us. Thank you for making us right in your presence and giving us your faith, giving us your love. We honor you. We praise you in this place in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Now, we give you praise, Father, and we give you glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. All the agree with that prayer I said, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for his goodness. All right. Now, today, we're going to get into some good stuff. Some good stuff. Uh, Ephesians chapter number 5 told you to be filled with the Spirit. Now we're going to find out why did Paul, by the Holy Ghost, tell the church to be filled with the Spirit. Why do you need to be filled with the Spirit? It's the same thing as why do I need to renew my mind? It's the same thing. It's the same thing as why do I need to put on the whole arm of God? It's the same thing. All right. Now, let's go to work. Let's go to work. Now, uh, I was teaching on this. This is part three. I want to go to 1 Thessalonians. I'm going to give you my subject for today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we also talked about the will of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse number 17 is our key verse. Now remember, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Because all of this, God has shown us what his will is. First of all, you got to be holy. To be holy, you got to be saved. You got to have the spirit. So when I say to people, are you saved? You have to clarify to people what does it mean to say, are you saved? Because to say to people, are you saved, they think it means I'm a member of a church. They think it means I'm Catholic. They think it means I'm apostolic. They think it means I'm Baptist. You know, we, I'm, we, that's not the same word as saved. You know, when you say those words, you are saying where you go to church at. I, I attend a Baptist church. I attend a Catholic church. I attend an apostolic church. I attend a Methodist church. All of these are where you go. But we have interchanged the same word as saved. Now, the word saved is not the same word. The word saved means do you have the Spirit? 
Now, if you'll follow me live out there, good morning, church family. Good morning, body of Christ. Right. Now, if you're following me out there, when I ask you, are you saved, I'm saying, do you have God's spirit? Do you have the spirit of Christ? I'm not asking you what church you go to, but most people answer it by what church they go to. No, do you have the Holy Spirit? Now, that's what you want to be able to shout out this morning. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. To be saved means you're God's son, God's daughter. To be saved means you are in Christ. To be saved means you have put on the Lord Jesus Christ. To be saved means I have put on the whole arm of God. To be saved means God has renewed my mind. To be saved means I'm filled with the Spirit. See, all those same words are the same thing when Paul deal with them in different books and different chapters. All right, now let's go to work. Now what I want to do today is I want to make sure that you understand God's word because we're going to get into a whole lot of stuff. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, here's our subject. Pray without ceasing. Now, I'm going to give it to you like the Lord gave it to me because he gave me one word on my tape or DVDs or my messages. Saying capitalized, and you can put a couple, uh, just make sure to capitalize. And there's the word pray. One word for this church. One word for the body of Christ. Pray. N pray. We're not going to be arguing about, well, do I pray in the spirit? Do I pray? Listen, pray. Because when Paul answered that question, he told him, look, just pray with all prayers. Praise God. Pray. All this stuff we arguing about, but, well, I don't believe in praying the Spirit. Well, I'm okay with well, Listen, pray. Because the key is you got to learn how to pray. In this timing we are living in today, I thought about the Spirit of God brought to my attention when he gave me this message, Daniel. And he showed how at that time, Daniel was in a situation where he was in captivity. And the captivity that he was in, he had no way out. He was under a worldly king. He was under a king that did not believe in his God. And then God gave him the answer. This morning, the Holy Spirit said to me, as a matter of fact, last night, before I went to bed, and the Spirit of God was saying, I was meditating, I go to bed early on Saturday. When I say early, I'm talking about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 5 o'clock if I can. And the Spirit of God remind me that when he, when he filled me with the Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit did that, he said to me, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I said, okay, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. I won't forget that. This morning, God reminded me Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Now, we're going to show you what that verse is. This is what the apostle John told the church of God. 1 John chapter number 4 and verse 4. We want to put that on the screen. 1 John 4 and 4. We're going to use it out of the King James when we're there. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. And he's going to say to them, Beloved, now are you the children of God. Now, because they were the children of God, and when you are children of God, you have something that the world don't have. Hallelujah. 
I like that kind of stuff. So in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Now, I want that to be shouted out before we go anywhere else because that's what it means to be saved. When you're saved, you have God living on the inside of your soul. Greater is he that's in you. Come on, say it to somebody. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Now, you just can't say it. <coughs> Excuse me. You got to know this. You have to know God is living in your soul. Now, if you was in church this morning, I would ask you a question. Are you sure that God is living in your soul? When you're saved, you know where God is. When you're saved, you know God is living in this house. So before we go anywhere else, all you out there watch us on Facebook, watch us on our webpage, I want you to be able to shout it out to somebody. God lives in my soul. Before we go anywhere else, 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Now that's an awesome thing. See, all those things Paul knew, these are the things that Paul knew why he was able to fight the good fight of faith. Why was Paul able to fight the good fight of faith? Because he knew something. He knew that God lived in his soul. So when he quoted things like, great is he like John did, great is he that's in me than he that's in the world, Paul said things like this. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, well, let's just go to Romans. Let's go to Romans. We, we can show it to you in the book. Why would he make a declaration like that? Romans chapter number 8. I'm going to read a little of that. In verse 31. So you ought to mark your Bible. Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. See, after Paul made all the boasting, he got down to verse 31. He said, what shall we say then to these things? See, after he made his conclusion, what shall we say to these things? Here it is. If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, that's how I want you to be able to talk. We're watching all this television, and we're hearing everything that man say he's going to do, and people are all frustrated and, and aggravated, and, oh, pastor, what's getting ready to happen? Listen. You have a secret weapon that you are getting ready to start doing if you have not already been doing. God said to me, son, what did Daniel do when he was living in captivity and the king did not believe in his God? What did he do? I said, well, Daniel was a man of prayer. He said, stop right there. So what do you need to do the apostle Paul was an apostle in his day that God had given the revelation of the mystery. Paul was living in a time where the king did not believe in his God. He was under the, the authority of the Roman government where they did not honor the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob they honor the God of Caesar. They worship idols and images. But God had somebody in place who knew how to pray. I know what I'm talking about today. God put Paul where he put him at because Paul had something that the world didn't have. You got something that the world don't have. The world didn't give it to you and the world can't take it away. 
Today we're going to learn what is God's power. You need to write that down. because We're going to get into that maybe the next service. We don't, we're going to be teaching on prayer this week and probably next week. One word, pray. When somebody come to you and say, Pastor, did you hear what was going on? And what you're going to say to them is, pray. That's your answer. I'm telling you what situation you find yourself in right now. What are you going through right now? Unemployment lines are longer than they've ever been. Food lines are longer than they've ever been. Pestilent diseases are raging in our country. And man do not seem to care. But what do the church supposed to do? Can somebody help me out here this morning? What do the church supposed to do? Do we just mama? Do we complain? Do we think that there's no end to this story? Or do we understand that God gave us something that the world do not have? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. When Jesus Christ came into this world, he came into this world as a man came from heaven. Remember, you are heavenly yourself. And here's a world of situation. How did Jesus fix it? Every night, every morning, he'll find himself in prayer. Sometime all night to the Father. So when he came down out the mountain, he was ready to tell the people, everything going to be all right. How could Moses tell the children of Israel that deliverance has come to you? That's what I want you to say to somebody. See, God has already, God has already done this thing, but I want you to be able to shout it out. Deliverance has come to the church. My God Almighty. Now, we know God already delivered the church. We know the church is a delivered being. But I'm talking about just everyday stuff that you've been worried about. I'm telling you right now that the, the Lord whom we serve has heard the prayers of the righteous. Somebody out there ought to begin to rejoice. Hallelujah. Somebody out there ought to be able to rejoice. God has heard the prayers of his people. How you know, Pastor? Because God said to me, pray. That's your answer? And at, at the meantime, my wife and I were sitting at our dinner table. And I said to my wife, God just gave me my message. She said, what is it? I said, pray. And right then we began to pray. And I'm telling you, I believe God that our God has heard our prayers and our God is already moving. So I'm telling you right now, expect deliverance. Expect to see the salvation of the Lord. Expect to see changes. Expect to see changes that you never have been seeing. Expect something good is about to happen in this country. How do I know that, Pastor? Because God told me to just pray. And ever since that moment, I have not been concerned, worried, anxiety. None of that kind of stuff has entered my heart. Because I know when God told Daniel to pray, God wanted to move. Let me say it again. When God want to do something in the earth, he have to have the righteous. He have to have the people who have his Holy Spirit. I'm not just talking about just a Shundai and, and all this other stuff. I'm talking about a person that's filled with the Spirit, who's walking in the Spirit, who's walking in the love of God. I'm not talking about you got some of your heart, you know, all this other foolishness. I ain't talking about you. You can't get a prayer through. When you can't even live right, you can't even get a prayer through to live right. Pray that you'll live right. I'm talking to people who are living holy. I'm talking to people who know their God. 
I'm talking to people who walk with their God every day. You must understand when Daniel was in a situation he did not know what to do, he prayed. When Moses was in a situation he did not know what to do, he moved, but he moved because the children of Israel had prayed. When Daniel was in the lion den, he prayed. When Jonah was in the whale's belly, he prayed. You go back and look at the history books. Every time the righteous prayed, God moved. I'm telling you right now, I believe I got a church out there who hear the Spirit of the Lord. I believe I got people out there who's jumping up and down in their own bedroom saying, I know what I have to do now. I don't have to go tell everybody about it. All I got to do is get down on my face before my God. I can sit down. I can stand up. I can just talk to my God. And let me tell you something. And I know the God whom I serve will move. God will move people. God will move things. God will move prices. God will move places. God will move cities. God will move anything to get to you. All you need to do is pray. Talk to your God. Watch your God. Watch it move. Let me teach this because I'm just, I'm just excited about this. But I got to give you the word. So when God said pray without ceasing, he talking about pray without stopping, continual, without intercession, stay in a place of prayer. Play, stay in a place of thanksgiving. Now remember, thanksgiving is also praying. So you don't have to stay with just act, act, act. You got to thank God. And I believe that's where God wants us at right now. Begin to thank God for moving on our behalf. All right, now let's, let's get into this word because, boy, this is so good. Now, first thing I want to do, I want to go to, uh, let's go back to some things we talked about. Now, let's go to Ephesians. I'm just going to dive right in here. Ephesians chapter number 6. Now, in Ephesians chapter 6, remember when Paul says, put on the whole arm of God, He's talking about the same as be filled with the Spirit. He's talking about renew your mind. He's talking about to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. All these things are the same thing. He's talking about you got to make sure you have the Spirit. Because if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, then you're none of His. All right? Now, in Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now remember the Apostle Paul was a man who was in prayer, was in a man of prayer, but he was also a man that had been locked up in prison. He's also a man that had gone through so much. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 showed us all the stuff he had gone through. We talked about that last week. But the way he approved himself Let's show you that in 2 Corinthians. I'll show you that one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He was showing how you could know who you are. When you, when you are who you are. See, everybody talk about who they are, not are. But he told you how you're going to know. We're going to look at that. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Let me show you just why Paul boasts a little. And verse number uh, 24. He, he went on through his whole thing. And then in verse number 20, well, let's start 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak of a, as a fool, I am more. In labors, more abundantly, in stripes, more, more above measure, above measure, in prison, more frequent, <clears throat> in death, often, of the Jews, five times received by 40 stripes. He's telling you all the stuff he went through. Of the Jews, five times I received forty strikes. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep. In prisons often. In perils often. 
in prayers of robbers, in prayers by means of my countrymen, in prayers by the heathens, in prayers in this city, in prayers. He talked, those prayers are dangerous. In prayers in the wilderness, so all these, are, it, he was in danger. In prayers in the sea, in prayers among false brethren, in weariness and painful and watching often, hunger and thirst and fasting often, cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without and those things that come upon me daily, and watch what he says, the cares of all the churches. Out of all this he went through, he still had to take care of all the churches. And he says, who am weak? And I am not weak. Who was offended? And I burn not. If I may need, if I may need glory, I will glory in the thing which concerning mine infirmities. The God of our Lord, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor, under error to the king, watch this, kept the city of the of Damascus, and the garrison desired to apprehend me. They wanted to kill me, hang me, cut my head off. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall, and I escaped his hand. So Paul was going through all of his stuff that he'd been through. But then how are you going to know what Paul's answer was? Paul was a man of prayer. Now, when we go back to 2 Corinthians, we're going to, show you, we're going to go down to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 now. Let's back back. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 10. I'm sorry. We're already there. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. That's where we want to be at. I'm sorry. We're going to go to Ephesians, 2 Corinthians 10, but we're going to do, we're going to do uh, Ephesians 6 first. Then we go back to 2 Corinthians 10. But I want to go to uh, Ephesians first. I want to, uh, you can put something in both of those places because we're going to go to them. Uh, Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse 10. And then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 10. Uh, then we're going to look at verse 1. All right. Now, Ephesians 6 and 10. Paul said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Watch what he says. Put on the whole arm of God. Now, you got to understand something. All this stuff is not spooky. He's still talking about make sure you're saved and make sure you have the Holy Spirit. Now, let, let me get that out of the way because you got people who teach wrong doctrine in this area. All right? But so let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 first. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. See, you got to understand something. When Paul's talking about 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he told us how, what qualifies him as being a minister. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, let's, let's go to verse 3. Now remember, Paul is qualifying himself of being a minister. And a lot of people say they are ministers, especially when you get into five-fold ministry or becoming a pastor or even having an anointing to be a teacher. When you get into that, that kind of ministry, you got to make sure, first of all, you save and have the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking about no gimmicks. I'm not talking about no gimmicks. Because a lot of folks say, you got the Holy Ghost, then they begin to say, Hid out of my Santa. Listen, you can train yourself to pray in tongues and do not have the Holy Spirit. I have found that out. I have met people who have trained themselves to, to, to speak in tongues that they call tongue and have not the Holy Spirit. See, I, I pray in tongues. I have the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have the spirit of discernment. And you know people when you're around that don't have the spirit. And you can hear people trying to pray in the spirit, and that ain't no spirit. They mimic it. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 3, he said, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. So he's telling you, giving no office, that the ministry be not blamed. The, these things has to happen. Verse number four. But in all things, approving ourselves. See, when you're in ministry, you have to approve yourself as the minister of God. This is how you approve yourself. Number one, in much patience. 
See, he, what is he telling you? He's telling you you got to have the Holy Spirit. you got to be filled with the Spirit. See, if you're not, you're trying to do something. You know, I, I got in my notes this morning, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you about uh, the, the anointing to teach, which I have in my life, the anointing to teach. But you can't teach if you don't know. See, if you don't have the revelation of the mystery, if you don't know, you can't teach. If you go to any school, why is the teacher teaching? Because they know. See, you can't teach what you don't know. And that's why my responsibility is to make sure that the people who sit on this ministry understand. That's why I'm teaching on understanding God's vision. I can't teach understanding God's vision if I don't know God's vision. I got to know God's vision. So, 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, I'm sorry. He says, but in all things are proving ourselves as the ministers of God. Then he told you how to do it. In much patience. Number two, in afflictions. Number three, in necessities. In distresses. In stripes. In imprisonment. In tumults. In laboring. In watching. In fasting. In pureness. In knowledge. In long suffering. By kindness. By the Holy Ghost. By love unfinished. Verse number seven. By the word of truth and by the power of God. By the word of truth, by the power of God. You got to know the word of truth and you got to know the love of God. The love is the power of God. Let me say it again. The word of truth is God's faith and then the power of God is God's love. Faith and love. Then it says, by the armor of righteousness. The armor of righteousness. See, the kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17, told us that the kingdom of God not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. You have to have on Christ. See, when you're talking about put on the whole armor of God, you're talking about put on Christ. That's all he's talking about. You've got to make sure you're in Christ and Christ is in you. By the word of God, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Then he said, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report. He's talking about how you handle that. How do you handle evil report? How do you handle it? It good report. Deceive us and yet true. Unknown and yet well known. Dying and behold we live. See? Chasing and yet not killed. Sorrowful and yet rejoicing. As poor, making many rich. As having nothing and yet possessing all things. See, he's, he won't know how. See, if you're not filled with the Spirit, how are you going to handle a situation? See, do you, do you, do you act or do you react? Because you do one of them. And you got to learn how to understand your, your responsibility is to act, not to react. It's all somebody can do is say something and you'll react. See, you got to understand that the weapons of our warfare, we're going to show you it's not carnal. But let's do Ephesians first. Ephesians chapter number 6. Watch what Paul said in verse number 11. That's where we're going to start it. Because he told you, verse 10 said, be, Brethren, be strong in the Lord, his power is might. He's showing you how to do that. Here, here it is. This is how you do it in verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, what does it mean to put the whole armor on? See, he's not talking about what people are doing. You know, you, know, you got the armor on, child. See, all this stuff is religion to them. L let, let me show you one verse before I go into wheels. Let's go to Romans chapter 13. See, if you got the whole armor of God, God not telling you anything different in Roman, that he told you in Philippians, that he told you in Ephesians, that he told you in Corinth. He's only talking about make sure you have the Spirit. Because this is the greatest problem with people. They don't have the Holy Spirit. 
They'll tell you, oh, I've been baptized in water in Jesus' name. And then they'll try to speak in tongues. Listen, you don't, have to, you don't have to prove nothing to me. But you don't go to heaven. You don't, you don't go to heaven. You don't live with God. You don't walk in the Spirit just because you've been water baptized and you can speak in tongues. Because you can do both of those physically and never receive the Spirit. So you must understand, to receive the Holy Spirit is what you got to count on. All this other stuff that's coming up on this world, God has given you off and since you was the march, the church has been closed down. You got to make sure you got the Spirit. It's an awesome thing to, to be sitting around the house every day. Well, I, show, I wish God would show me what to do. I'm telling you, be filled with the Spirit. But you keep saying you got the Spirit. If you have the Spirit, then now walk in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. And usually people not doing that is because they don't have the Spirit. So they end up worried, afraid, murmuring, complaining, because you, you don't have the Spirit. Please pay attention. You got to make sure you have the Spirit. I'm going to show you in the Word of God three things. Matter of fact, two things you can do. Matter of fact, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to come back to Ephesians and I'm going to stop right here and show you how to receive the Spirit. So you can't go by people you see in the day telling you, yeah, you can receive the Spirit, just be baptized. Listen, church, that's why you don't have it. Let me say this. If you think that you can be baptized in water in the name of Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit, you are lying. You have been deceived. And if you believe in that from some church, they deceive you and your soul is at stake. Watch what the Word says. Ephesians chapter 1. You know, you know what I would do if I was going to a church and somebody challenged me like this? At least I look at the Bible. At least I go to the Bible and say, well, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe my religion was wrong. Maybe my tradition is wrong. Just like we got people out there who will tell you, who has told us, that you can be saved by Romans 10, 9 and 10. I'm going to show you that again too. Wrong. Listen. Listen what the Word says. When you read Romans chapter 10, you need to understand you're taking it out of context. Romans chapter 9, 10, and 11 are all to the Jewish believer. It was not to you. Read it again. We're going to go to both of those scriptures right now. First of all, Ephesians chapter 1. I want to go to verse number 13. Ephesians chapter number 1. Verse 13, here we go. In whom you also trusted. Underline the word trusted. Because that's number 2. You had to do something else before you could trust. That word trust really means to believe. So you need to put that on your Bible. Trust means to believe. First of all, in whom you believe. That's what it says. In whom also you believed. After you heard. So he's telling you, you believed after you heard. I want you, I want you all to help me out out here today. Number one, you did what? You heard. Number two, you believed. But what did you hear? What did you believe? Now this is where people get off at. They don't, they're not students of the Bible. Here's a man, got, he gets in church, and he just preaches, 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 don't know what he's preaching. And yet people say, oh, I heard this morning. I heard this morning. I heard. What did you hear? I'm going to show you in the Word of God that you must hear the Word of truth. Let me say it again. You got to hear the Word of truth. Now watch this. 
When you say the word of truth, the word of truth is the revealed word. Let me say it again. The word of truth is the revealed word. So when Paul preached the gospel of Christ, the gospel of Christ is the revealed word. It's not Jesus before the cross. It's Christ raised from the dead with all power and authority. Seated at the right hand of the Father. You're preaching Christ and him crucified. But everything you preach is past tense. You're not preaching shall be saved like they did in Romans 10. You're preaching you were saved. You are saved. Why? Because the cross saved you. Christ died on the cross for what purpose? To save you. We're going to show you that in Timothy today. Maybe the next week. I don't know. Maybe the second service. God's will is that all men be saved. Well, how did he save us? On the cross. Why did Christ die? To save all humanity. So you have to understand, to preach Christ, you've got to preach a revealed word. The tr word truth means the revealed word. Not the word in flesh. On this side of the cross, Jesus in the flesh. On this side of the cross, Jesus not working. Jesus sat down. Jesus, both Lord and Christ, Acts 2.36. See, the thing about it is you need to be taught by somebody who had the anointing to teach. Let's move on. Now, what am I showing you now? Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. All right, it says... In whom you also believe, that word trust me and believe, after you heard, heard what? The word of truth. Now, when you say you heard the word of truth, you heard the gospel of your salvation. Watch what it says. The gospel of your salvation. Just look at it real good. When you heard the word of truth, you heard the gospel of your salvation. So if I go back over here, and if I hear baptized in water, John the Baptist, that's not the gospel of my salvation. If I go to the, Peter, James, and John, baptized in water in Jesus' name, that's not the gospel of my salvation. See, I got to go over here to Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Let's go to Romans 1, 16. Let's show you the gospel of your salvation. Romans chapter 1. See, you got to know what the word of truth is, what the gospel of your salvation is. This is why so many people say, or not say, they have not been taught. They are going to churches where the man don't know, or the woman don't know. They learn what they learn from their tradition, religious fathers and mothers. Romans chapter 1, verse 15. So much as in me is, Paul says. So much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel. Well, what gospel, Paul? The gospel of the kingdom? No. I preach the gospel of the kingdom to the Jews, not the Gentiles. I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Watch what it says. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What gospel is he preaching? What gospel is Paul preaching? The gospel of Christ. I want to make sure I hear it on this camera over here. What gospel is, is Paul preaching? The gospel. the gospel of Christ. He's preaching the gospel of Christ. Why is he preaching the gospel of Christ? Watch what it says. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For the gospel of Christ, watch this, is the power of God. You need to underline that word. What's the gospel of Christ? It's the power of God. I'm going to ask this camera over here. What's the gospel of Christ? It's the power of God. 
Now, you got to know what the power of God is. You'll know why he's preaching it. If you're not preaching the gospel of Christ, you're not preaching the power of God. It took me years. It took me years to get where I am today. Forty years of preaching Christ. But if you're not preaching Christ, you're not preaching the power of God. I want you to put this in your notes. Door of faith, I need you out there. I need you to shout it out. The power of God is the love of God. Minister Hayes sang that this morning. She sang about the love of God. The power of God is the love of God. That's why the Bible says you can have all of this stuff and have not love. It profits you nothing. The power of God is the love of God. When Paul preached Christ crucified, he's preaching you the love of God. He's preaching you the love of God. What shall separate us from the love of God? You can't, you got to understand something. The Christ on the cross is God's love to man. Let me say it again. Christ on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection is God's love to man. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is God's love for you. So when I preach Christ, I'm preaching God's love to humanity. When I preach Christ, I'm preaching the power of God. That's why love never fails. Preach God's love and people will be saved. Preach God's love. Devils will cry out and come out of people. Man will be saved and changed if you'll preach God's love. Preach the cross. Christ and him crucified. Romans 1, 16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God under salvation. To everyone that it is, that believe it. One word. He didn't tell you nothing about no water baptism. I'm telling you right now, God knows my heart goes out for you because you've been deceived. And the people who follow you have been deceived. You cannot be saved by water baptism. Water baptism is a, is a rite, it is a ceremony, it's a type and a shadow of, of the old covenant. As a matter of fact, as long as you're in that kind of stuff, you have never come to the cross. You're in religion, tradition of men. People are dying, going to hell, believing your false doctrine. You've been deceived. People are talking about you got to get water baptized to get in the church. You are the church. You don't get baptized to get in the church. You get saved and become the church. You are the church, the body of Christ. And it takes the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, to put you in the body. Romans chapter 1, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes it. It doesn't make any difference. Here we are in America telling the Jews that they got to, how they're going to be saved. You're not telling them they're going to be saved. You're telling them when Jesus comes back, they're going to be saved. Listen to what you're doing to the people. You are saying all these people are dying and dying and dying and going to hell while you telling them Jesus is going to come back for them. Do you, why can't you give them the word? Why can't you step over your religion, tradition of men and give people the truth? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believe it, Paul says to the, to the Jew first, also to the Gentile. It doesn't make any difference who you are. You can only be saved by the cross. But therein is the righteousness of God revealed. When you preach Christ, when you preach Christ, therein is God's righteousness revealed. 
Christ is God's righteousness revealed. Christ is God's righteousness is revealed. 1 Corinthians 1 30, Christ is God's righteousness. When you preach Christ, you're preaching in Christ, God's righteousness revealed. From faith to faith, and it's written, the just shall live by faith. All right, let, let's, let's, let's move on. Now let's go back to Ephesians. Now I gave you feet, let, let's go back to uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 7, just one verse. 2 Corinthians 6, 7. Because you got to understand the power of God. So if I don't do nothing else, I'm going to give you that. By the word of truth. This is how a man approves himself. Making sure you're preaching the word of truth. Making sure you believe in the word of truth. The word of truth, Ephesians 1, 13. Now that, let me go back and clean that up after this. Ephesians 1, 13. After this. We're going to do 2 Corinthians first. Then we're going to go back to Ephesians 1, 13 because I want to make sure I, 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 I clean that up. There are three, three things that I want to make sure how you receive the Holy Spirit. Don't want to make sure you don't get off of that. But let's finish this right here first. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 7. Approving yourself by the word of truth. Do you preach the word of truth? Do you know what the word of truth is? Do you believe the word of truth? Do you know what it is? I talked about it before. The word of truth is the gospel of Christ. The word of truth is Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. When you read Galatians chapter 3, verse 1, it told them, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not know the word of truth or the Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. You saw Christ crucified. That's the word of truth. All right, then it says by the word of truth, and then it says by the power of God. Let's put that scripture back up there again, 2 Corinthians 6, 7. By the word of truth, by the power of God. We want to be, make sure we say that. By the word of truth, by the power of God. You see that? By the word of truth, by the power of God. Now, the word of truth is the faith. Power of God is God's love. By the arm of righteousness. Now, God's righteousness, he showed you what God's armor is. Because I'm going to talk about put on the whole arm of God. He's talking about put on Christ. Put on God's righteousness. You're not made right by water baptism. You're not made right by works and deeds. You haven't put on God's righteousness. You got to put on Christ. And that's the problem with people. They think they can get water baptized. They're all right with God. No. You can't put on righteousness by water baptism. If that could have happened, the Jews could have been baptized. John the Baptist. Why do we kill John the Baptist? You cannot be made righteous by works. Christ is God's righteousness. So all Paul is telling you is make sure you put on God's righteousness. By the word of truth, we in 2 Corinthians 6, 7, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness, on the right hand, on the left. All right, now let's go back to Ephesians. Because Ephesians chapter number 6, I'm sorry, chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, we, reading verse 13 again. But we're going to put them together, 13 and 14. Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 13 and 14. In whom also you trust, that word trust and believe. I'm going to turn to the NLT, if that's okay. The NLT. And I'm going I'm to show you that word now is believe. Okay? The word trusted really means to believe. See, if you don't trust me, you don't believe me. Same word. So if you don't trust God, it's because you don't believe God. All that God did with Israel in the Old Covenant was for what purpose? So they would believe God. And if you don't believe me, you don't trust me. It's the same word. All right? If Ephesians chapter 1, we're reading out the NLT. And verse number 13, just one verse, watch what it says. And now you Gentiles have also, watched this, heard the truth. See, the word of truth is the truth. He's telling you how you say it. Number one, you heard the truth. Come on, I want you to put out that. I want you to be able to say to somebody, this is how you say it. I want you to minister this morning out there. This is how you say it. Number one, 
First, you got to hear the truth. The word of truth. You got to hear the word of truth, the gospel of Christ. This is how you're saved. Number two. And when you believed in Christ, number two, you got to believe in Christ. Number two, you got to believe what? You got to believe in Christ. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I read that every time I minister. I'm going to read it again today because it told you what you got to believe. You got to believe Christ died for your sins. Christ was buried. God raised him from the dead for your justification. So when the Bible talk about believe, that's what he's talking about. Ephesians 1.13 out of NLT. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own. Now you become a son of God. How did he identify you? By giving you the Holy Spirit. How did he identify you? By giving you the Holy Spirit. Now if you're at a place where they're teaching you water baptism, how do you get the Holy Spirit? They told you you got to be baptized in water in Jesus' name to receive the Holy Spirit. That's their denomination. They got that from the Old Testament, from Peter, James, and John, and also the Old Testament from John the Baptist. Those people who had followed Peter, James, and John were baptized with the Holy Ghost because they were baptized with water. This is not what, that, this is not that. What I'm telling you is spirit baptism. I'm talking about not the spirit coming on you. I'm talking about God putting you in the spirit or God putting the spirit in you. See, they are talking about a man baptized you in water and, and you got up and you heard it about Sunday. Little, you, listen, you don't have no Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit not coming inside of you. The, listen, Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost did not come inside of the Jewish believer. Let me say that again. Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost did not come in the Jewish believer. The Holy Ghost came on. Hold your finger right there. See, all oh, this is good. Let me finish, let me finish. Ephesians chapter number 1. He says, verse 13, I'm sorry. And now you Gentiles have heard the truth, number one, that good knew that God saves. You heard the truth, that good knew that God saved. He's talking about Christ. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit. All right? He gave you the Holy Spirit. So we see the one. He heard, believed, God gave you the Holy Spirit. Now, what I just tell you, I'm going to take you to. Acts chapter 2. Now, what's, what's the difference? Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Because this is what people are still, to, this is why people still don't want to change their name. Or uh, what, what's your church you go to? I'm a Pentecost. I'm a Pentecost. What are you saying? You are still at Acts chapter 2. That's what you're saying. Well, Pentecost, the Holy Ghost did not come in you. If I could just get over to somebody. At Pentecost, the Holy Ghost did not come in you. The Holy Ghost came on you. Acts chapter 2. Out of the King James Version, Acts chapter 2. We want to read verse 1 from the book of Acts, chapter 2. And verse 1, the Bible said, and when the day of Pentecost, remember that was a day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now here the Holy Ghost has filled the whole house, not the people, the building. The whole church was full of the Holy Ghost. And they appeared under them cloven tongue like as a fire. Watch this. And he sat up on each of them. He sat up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongue as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Spirit came up on them. The Spirit came up on them. 
If you, if you don't understand that, you can take the Bible and, and transfer this, go right back to where we're quoted at in the Old Testament, and we'll do that the next service, and it's going to tell you, I will pour out of my spirit, watch this, up on all flesh. I will pour out of my spirit up on all flesh. And the sons and the daughters shall prophesy. Young man shall dream dreams. Old man. See, if, if you read what the word says, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, watch this, shall be saved. Shall be. Verse 18. Let's just do it one minute. Verse 18. Acts 2, verse 18. Just one verse. Out of the King James. And on my servants, and on my handmaid, not in, on, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. The Holy Ghost will come on you. We are not talking about back here where the Holy Ghost came on you in the book of Acts. We are over here under grace where the Holy Spirit comes inside of you and live, and now you're not your own. You're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which belong to God. Now you become God's temple, God's house. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Hallelujah, glory to God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. See, that's why I always read 1 Corinthians 15. Because, man, I tell you, when I found this stuff out, how God saved me, it's an awesome thing when you know you have the spirit. But it's, it's, it's also awesome when you know you've been deceived. I'm going to stay with my center camera there. 1 Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also I preach to you, which also have I received, Paul says, the same gospel which I preach to you, was also you have received and where you stand by which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preach to you. Unless you have believed in vain, I deliver you first of all that which I also received. How Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. That's how you say it. When somebody tell you something different, they are leading you to hell. My time is up. I thank you.